Hello guys, um, a week ago I made a video how to do a relative compression test with uh, OTC 2 channel left scope. I used um, a 3840 2 channel left scope and uh, I had great review from you guys. Today I decided to repeat this test but I'm gonna do I'm gonna use a uh, 4 channel left scope. I'm gonna use my VARES and um, uh, my goal is to use every possible tool that can be used to do a relative compression test. So we're going to use a uh, high current clamp, we're going to use a low current clamp, we're going to do a, uh, a voltage drop, we're going to use a voltage drop to do a relative compression test, we're going to use a uh, first look sensor or um, a pressure pulse sensor. And uh, so we're going to pretty much cover Gonna go, we're going to go through settings, how to set the uh, lab scope, how to set time, how to set voltage. Uh, also, in this testing, I'm going to adapt my uh, in-cylinder pressure transducer so we can actually see what's, uh, what's happening uh, inside a cylinder. And uh, as we build the pressure, as the piston goes to top dead center compression stroke, how the pressure builds up in the in a cylinder and how that relates to uh, our amperage and our current and our current and our voltage drop. So uh, in order to do this test we have to make sure that we have a good battery that battery can um, uh, that it's fully charged we have to make sure that the starter is good and good in good health we have to make sure if we use a uh, current clamp that the battery inside a current clamp is uh, good like 9 volt battery so we don't uh, so the reason why so you don't have any kind of false reading as we do the test so um, I'm gonna sh first let's look the uh, settings and let look let look all these um, cables that I got hooked up it's gonna look like little spaghetti but uh, um, of course guys you don't have to do all this what I did and this is just for educational purposes so it's going to be a little confusing to see all these wires, but I'll explain all this. Uh, so what I'm going to do a test on my uh, uh, Chrysler Sebring, the 2.7 uh, Chrysler engine, V6. So uh, we're going to have, of course, as I said, we have four channels. Uh, my uh, yellow channel is going to be... Uh, I have my yellow channel hooked up to battery. Uh, just, uh, you see the positive lead here, negative lead here, so just the battery. Uh, the uh, next is going to be my uh, green channel and that is going to be control from my uh, cylinder number two, from my coil number two. Uh, basically this is going to be our sink. So uh, what I have, I disconnect the coil. Uh, this is a ground size switch circuit so uh, I got uh, my test light. I'm back probing a control wire on the number two coil harness and uh, I have my uh, test light connected to battery positive because it's a ground side switched so um, you're gonna see the signal as the driver turns the our, uh, uh, as the driver turns the coil on. The uh, next gonna be our uh, uh, blue channel the blue channel is going to be a in-cylinder pressure transducer uh, this guy here and uh, I got my uh, it works off the 5 volt reference voltage. Um, this is my homemade uh, system. And uh, what I did, I had removed a uh, Schrader valve out of this uh, compression hose. A pressure hose, basically, this is the, the hose that we use for, um, uh, to, che to check the, uh, you know, our uh, compression. So I removed a uh, uh, Schrader valve so that we can have free flow of air as the piston goes up to top that uh, center compression so that this sensor can read changes in, in the pressure as we, as we build up the pressure and release the pressure. The good, uh, so Now the uh, last is going to be the red channel and that's going to be my uh, high, uh, this might be my uh, uh, current clamp, high current clamp. So, uh, so that's what we're going to do first. Uh, and one more thing before I forget, if you, when you start doing this and if your uh, signal from the current clamp is in, is in negative, you just invert it. So, so 
I'll show you this. So if it's uh, so, just to turn your clamp over. Uh, okay, so uh, let me uh, get the camera on the tripod, and then we'll uh, start. Okay, so uh, settings. Now all these wires um, is uh, sorry. Let me check my phone real quick. Uh, all these uh, wires, as you can see, that I put into my uh, lab scope. Uh, it's a little complicated. Basically, I had to I had I had to hook everything up. But again, if to do the relative compression test, all you're gonna need would be like a current clamp and your sink, so it's gonna be a lot easier to do. Uh, so now, uh, when we, what I have on my um, setting, uh, on traces, trace number one, it's gonna be my yellow lead, so that's my battery voltage, basically I'm having it on uh, 20 volts, uh, uh, 20 volts uh, DC and uh, then a trace 2 so that's, that's just the, we're going to look at the voltage drop the green channel is my um, control from uh, from my driver from my computer I had it at 20 volts uh, DC as well the uh, the, the uh, blue one is going to be a pressure transducer Again, it's going to be DC volts, 10 volts. This day works off the 5 volt reference voltage, so I'm going to choose 10 volt, 10 volts. So I don't, uh, I don't want to use phase five. My my signal is going to take the whole screen, so I'm going to I use 10. And then uh, uh, red channel is my um, high amp, um, uh, current high high current clamp. I'm sorry, uh, my current clamp. And um, the on this current, well, this clamp reads. Um, the um, one millivolt is uh, equal one amp, so um, uh, one, uh, so I've got the on uh, 500, 500 millivolts, and um, uh, that's gonna go get us up to 500 amps. So that's gonna be enough to do the test. Now on this one, I did uh, turn on my filter because sometimes the noise, uh, the signal can be very noisy. And um, putting the filter on is gonna is gonna help us out. So um, all right. So let's uh, let's crank the engine over now. To uh, do this test, of course, we have to disable uh, fuel or ignition. This time, I choose to uh, pull my uh, <coughs> my uh, fuel pump relay, and uh, I want my ignition to be active, my, uh, so like we can see the. Uh, uh, signal from our is our sync from our uh, coil number two so um, let's uh, let's crank the engine get some uh, traces on the on the screen and then we'll talk about it if I can find my keys there you go Zoom out. Okay. Oh, sorry, guys. I didn't turn on my uh, my uh, M clamp and. Uh,
All right, there you go. You got it. All right. So I'm sorry about that. I did not, I did not turn my uh, M clamp and my uh, instant low pressure transducer. So let's put this in the middle of the screen and uh, go to four. Let's see, maybe four would be better. Okay. So um, let's see what we what we get got here. So uh, the the red trace, what we see, it's our actually relative compression test. This is my um, uh, current from my uh, captured by by my uh, current clamp. Uh, the uh, yellow trace is a control from our uh, coil number two. We can see we got a battery voltage, and then a computer turns it down to zero, and that's this uh, where the the coils are actually saturated, and the, right at this point is where the spark actually happens. Uh, my uh, yellow trace is just uh, my uh, uh, system voltage and you can see as the as the uh, current increases the system voltage is dropping down so bas basically you can see these uh, uh, peaks taking place and uh, we can use this also to uh, do our relative compression test but in order to do that we'll have to set this uh, channel to AC coupling and we'll do that later on so uh, let's just uh, uh, and also my, my blue trace is my in silo pressure transducer. So let's, uh, let's talk about this capture here. So as we can see now, when the uh, piston is go, goes to uh, uh, top dead center compression, this is basically a compression, compression stroke. Uh, the uh, cylinder is, um, the piston is you know, pushing the, a uh, mixture of air and fuel and compresses inside the inside inside cylinder. Now, the, uh, in order for uh, engine for uh, for starter to uh, turn the engine as uh, as the uh, uh, pressure increases in our cylinder, our our um, resistance, our mechanical resistance is increasing as well. So, in order for for uh, starter to uh, keep turning the engine over to overcome this with this resistance, it has to have more current. So we can see that our peak of our compression is identical, it's full of the, uh, our amperage. And that's what the relative compression, uh, c compression uh, uh, actually is. So let's, uh, let's just uh, move it a little bit. And you can see it's absolutely identical. You can see how, we're, how we're, uh, as, as the compression increases, our current increases as well. So when the piston goes down, as the pressure decreases inside the cylinder, there will be no need for the, that much of a current, so current is going to decrease. Now, as we see our um, in yellow trace, we see a, uh, uh, our system voltage, and uh, we, can, uh, we can see that uh, every time, let's just maybe do this one here, Cleaner, maybe uh, we have a uh, on our uh, at this point my uh, my yellow tray my red uh, is uh, see, around 200 millivolts which basically it is a 200 let's see right there So it's around 190. So it's 190 amps of current is needed to overcome the compression inside the inside the cylinder. So uh, when we look our uh, uh, voltage, as I said, as the, as the uh, amperage increases, voltage is is decreased. The, the uh, voltage goes down. So our voltage is right at this point is the 10.48 volts. Now, as we Move the cursor, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, amperage goes down because now we are no longer on top that the top that center compression. Uh, we can see that uh, our like we have a, our current at this point is is uh, is 140 uh, amps, and our voltage went back up to 10.75. So the battery recovered. So now at uh, at this point, when the current is lowest, uh, it's 130 amps, and the battery went up to 10.7 amps. That's why it's important to have a, a good, healthy battery and good starter to do this test. Now, if there is any 
the problem, the mechanical problem in the engine, if any of these cylinders are not make, producing the same amount of, of compression, that's going to reflect on our current, and then we can find our problem in, uh, in, uh, in the engine. Uh, now, uh, other um, useful um, um, thing about relative compression test is also we can uh, use it as uh, for um, if you have a uh, if a suspect for our like if you have a no start and a suspect is jump timing we can actually um, move this down a little bit as when we have our uh, yellow traces our sink this is when the uh, spark happens and you can we can see here that a uh, when the piston is at the top dead center compression uh, our uh, this is when the computer turns on our our actually turns off the coil. Our coil is already on right here and maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Let me see that. So this is this is our dwell time. This is how long computer energizes the uh, coil. Um, so you can, we can measure that time but it shouldn't matter. But. And uh, it's about, let's see, 13, 13 milliseconds, 13.3 milliseconds. So um, that's how long the uh, uh, computer energizes our, our coil. And once the coil is turned off, this is where the spark happens right there. So now we know our engine is in time. Now we can do the same thing with our relative compression test. Uh, we can look at the peak at our uh, compression and we can, uh, uh, we can identify if we are in time or not. So right now we can see that right at the peak of our of our uh, amperage, that our uh, uh, coil is being turned on. So uh, that's another uh, useful uh, thing we can do with the relative compression test. Uh, so that's um, that's what I want to show you guys how this actually uh, how the, the 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 pressure and and amperage and the uh, and the voltage how they related to each other as the pressure inside a cylinder increases and decreases. Now, um, and the other uh, see what, what we can see right now. Another thing we can see actually is seems like we have a problem on this engine. We can clearly see that cylinder number two is actually has a lower lower current. And uh, let's just measure now. And this is a great example, you know, the, where we could have a, some problem with, uh, with the engine, with the cylinder. And uh, let's uh, see the uh, current right here is 150 amps. And uh, we already know and the good one is 190 amps. So we had like a 40 amps difference. Yeah, it's on 200. It's like on one. It's on 200 right now. Actually, let me let me do this again. I think I. So, crystal number two is. Okay, let's see. I need to move it. Okay, I'm sorry. 160 amps. It's crystal number two. And uh, the cylinder next to it has a uh, 190. Uh, 190. So you know what? I'm sorry, guys. Let's just do this. I'm gonna put one cursor on this one and one on this one. Okay. So um, let's see here. Okay. All right. So we can see. The cursor number one, the cylinder number, uh, uh, basically the, we can see 160 amps and uh, this cylinder has 180 amps. So we can see there is actual discrepancy there. So uh, now, uh, in order to identify what cylinder is a problem, of course, this we, now we can see, we, because since we trigger from the cylinder number two, we know this is number, number two. However, if we would have this event taking place maybe here, uh, we need to do. We need to know our uh, firing order. So the firing order for this engine is uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now, since we started from number single number two, we're going to two, three, four, five, six, one. Okay. 
So I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, and 2 again. So uh, now what's, uh, why, this is a good engine, I got nothing, there's nothing, nothing wrong with the engine, so why did we have a, this low compression uh, happening right now? Uh, simply, as I said before, uh, in the beginning of the video, uh, since I had my insular pressure transducer uh, adapted to my, uh, to my cylinder uh, and I took my uh, Schrader valve out of it, now basically the air that's pushed inside the cylinder is pushed into this, into this hose as well. So basically the same amount of air that is uh, sucked in it's not compressed up against the, sa the same volume, so it's, uh, it's compressed uh, the volume of the cylinder plus the volume of our hose. So that's why we see the uh, less, uh, uh, our uh, uh, amperage is actually less and uh, because the, 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 the compression is less in the cylinder. Now, at the end of the video, I will remove this uh, uh, compression gauge. I will uh, adapt this one, which has the uh, uh, a shredder valve in it, and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll see what what we're gonna have. So uh, now let's uh, do a second test where we're gonna use a, a yellow trace, and we're gonna, as I said, in order to use a, uh, a voltage drop for our current from a, a, our relative compression test. I'm sorry, we have to. Uh, we have to uh, set this uh, on AC coupling, and that's going to put us in the in the middle of the screen. And it's going to give us a uh, uh, trace that we can read. But basically, we're going to stretch that. We're going to going to block the DC, and we can stretch the signal. So um, I'm going to go to um, uh, now. I need to set up and the trace number one, right? And uh, I will change this voltage to actually 2 volts. And I think I need to see. I need to start recording. I believe. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to use it 2 volts. And, uh, and I'm sorry, this whole time my, my time base is 500 milliseconds uh, and that's pretty much all you need to do this test. But I can zoom in and out, you know, to, to uh, see the, the, whole, the, the whole picture. So uh, I'm putting it uh, to 2 volts and... Uh, oh, shoot, sorry. 2 volts uh, AC coupling. Oh, come on. Okay, right. there you go. Sorry about that. So I got I got two volts. I'm pressing this instead of. So we're just having a uh, regular leads and uh, AC coupling. Uh, it's displayed, and actually this time I also am gonna activate my filter, so uh, it will give me cleaner uh, cleaner trace, cleaner signal. So okay, so we can uh, go ahead and. Uh, do a relative compression test with a uh, also using a uh, bring this up a bit um, and uh, so now we're going to do a relative compression test with uh, a voltage drop system. All right, so uh, as we can see, you know, it is a good idea to use a filter because it's, it's a lot of uh, harsh in the, in the signal. But again, we can clearly see now, literally, it is a uh, voltage drop uh, is mimicking a, uh, our current. And, and this is what I said before, as a current increases, 
the uh, voltage decreases. So, uh, but we have to have this on a, a, a AC coupling in order to to to, to see this uh, signal. And now, as we can see right here, and actually this is what you want to look on. If you do this, you're basically looking at the bottom of your trace. So uh, now we can see that our voltage did not because our current did not uh, go up didn't go up to uh, I think it was 190 uh, amps uh, even to 160 or 150 uh, and um, so uh, our voltage did not drop that much so now we can see that there if, if we uh, if we see this on our trace uh, this is our problem right there so just remember remember I mean you can you can look up the so but it can be deceiving if you look the uh, the top peaks they're okay you have to look the bottom peak this is what you're uh, this since you're looking at a uh, voltage drop so you can see there were, the voltage did not drop same as all other as it dropped on all other cylinders because of a uh, less current that was uh, going through there to the system so uh, so basically that's the setup for uh, for uh, our um, uh, uh, um, if, if you want to, if you want to do a uh, relative compression test with a voltage voltage drop uh, so the next uh, will be a using a, a low current clamp and uh, uh, this current clamp low current clamp can uh, measure you know this one can measure up to uh, uh, 40 amps and uh, so I could, as you can see our um, Amperage you went know, way about 200 amps. So uh, in order to use this guy, we'll have to use AC coupling. And uh, so what we can do now is sometimes you might uh, have a problem where uh, the cable, the battery cable, is too big. You cannot you cannot put it over the battery cable. Uh, just go down to the starter. You should be able to uh, grab this, uh, you know, the, just the starter cable. That's all you need to get the uh, uh, current reading. So um, now I am going to uh, uh, change my, uh, I'm going to disconnect my, uh, let's see, uh, high current clamp. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to Again, make sure you've got a good battery in your in your in your current clamp. Okay. So uh, now I'm gonna plug in my uh, low current clamp. This card, I don't have to go down to the solder because um, it is. Uh, I can. This actually is a small cable, so I can. Uh, I don't have a problem. You can see, guys, here's my uh, clamp. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm. I'm gonna turn it on a um, uh, 40 amp. Okay. Basically, a 10 millivolts equal one amp. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna put it over my my. Um, battery and uh, now we're going to change the setting on our channel so this time as I said I will uh, uh, because if, if we crank the engine over now you know this clamp can only read up to 40 amps it's going to be off the screen we cannot we can't use it so I'm going to use my so now it's going to be uh, red channel that's where we had our high current clamp, so trace uh, uh, 4, and I'm going to put it on the 2 volts, and uh, uh, 2 volts uh, AC coupling, and I'm going to leave it, I'm sorry, I got, got, I'm sorry, I got, uh, 2 volts um, AC coupling, and I'm going to have my filter on, so, um, okay. So let's uh, let's crank it over again. 
Now, one more thing I forgot to say, when you do a to compression test and, and you're checking that, make sure there is no obstruction uh, of air inside your uh, intake manifold, so you have to press your pedal all the way to the floor so you get your throttle open, through the throttle body is, is open. Okay, I got nothing. Okay, so I didn't do something right. I should have hook it up right. Okay, it should work. Okay. All right, so uh it's almost identical signal from the low current clamp to high current clamp, so actually it's a little cleaner than, than, a, low, than, than a high current clamp. So again, we can see that uh, um, uh, the same, the same uh, uh, reading, basically the same pattern, uh, and uh, so I got a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1. So, uh, so this is a, if you don't have a, so the, you know, we can, we can use a low, low current clamp to do the relative compression as well. So, uh, okay, so we covered a uh, high current clamp, low current clamp, uh, we covered a, uh, um, I'm sorry guys, um, voltage, voltage drop and what's the, uh, how they relate to each other and um, my next te test I'm going to use a uh, a, uh, a first look sensor. I'm gonna set all that up, and then uh, we'll. Uh, so I'm gonna use this guy to uh, do a relative compression test. What this is gonna do basically, it instead of uh, it's not reading any current. Basically, it reads a uh, uh, senses a uh, pulses in in the in exhaust pulses from the the. Uh, uh, and when engine cranks, you know, when and it sucks the air and pushes the air out into the exhaust, if you have a healthy engine, uh, every, each piston is gonna is gonna suck the same amount of air and push the, the of mixture of air or fuel. This actually in this instance only air because the fuel is disabled. So uh, the same amount of air that's sucked into the cylinder is gonna be pushed out into the exhaust. So if you have a healthy engine, uh, we're gonna have the same pulsations. Uh, from each cylinder. So uh, let me uh, let me put this up. I'll show you the setting how I uh, and uh, and then we'll uh, do this test. Okay, guys. Well, I got my uh, first uh, look sensor in. Uh, this is the hose. I got it in uh, in my exhaust, and uh, there's the sensor, and the cable is going to go in. I, I got it connected to my uh, to my lab scope all the way in there. So. All right. So I got my. Uh, First look sensor hooked up, and uh, what we're gonna do? Uh, basically, it's I know it's kind of hard to 
get all these wires right now, I mean, it's just, uh, everything is just all over the place. I mean, uh, uh, basically, first look sensor um, uh, makes its own voltage, uh, senses a uh, difference in pulsation, um, and um, uh, what you gotta do is just, uh, you know, there's a, like, red, and it's just real leads, you know, black and, 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 and red. You just hook up to your, uh, to your lab scope, and uh, now, uh, when you, uh, do your settings. Uh, you kind of have to play to see what what signal is going to look. And uh, so my uh, my first look sensor is going to be on the on, on my green channel, and uh, my settings going to be a uh, five volts with a filter on again and an AC coupling because this signal, this sensor makes a uh, AC sound wave. It makes its own voltage. You don't have to have a, a battery supply on it. Uh, so uh, let's uh, crank the engine over and see uh, the last uh, way of doing the electrical pressure test. Okay. And now I don't have my trigger from uh, cylinder number two anymore. I needed this uh, channel. So basically, this is my uh, 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 f first look sensor. As you can see, uh, each time, let's uh, move the uh, red trace. This is my current clamp. And uh, now we can see that every time, and uh, uh, like, when the piston you know goes up, pushes the air out, we're gonna have a pulse taking place as uh, the sensor senses a uh, you know pulsation. Now, uh, actually, we can see here that this is, since this cylinder has less air, they push the less air out because of the hose is adapted in it. Actually, it's nice to see this. We can see this uh, this signal is actually less compared to other uh, uh, other uh, cylinders. Okay. Uh, so uh, so this one this one so the, again this would be uh, this would be now number two and three four five six and then one okay so uh, this is the uh, other way of uh, doing a relative compression test now um, uh, what I'm going to do now I'm going to uh, disconnect my um, my uh, I'm going to disconnect my uh, the insular pressure transducer. I'm just going to plug it out. I'm going to unplug it, and I'm going to simulate a dead hole in the in the engine. I'm not going to have any sink right now, but we'll we'll see the we'll see that you know actually even bigger uh, uh, that our amperage is going to be even lower right here because basically I'm just going to let the air out of the cylinder. I'm just going to unplug my. Uh, So let's uh, let's do that real quick. Start the recording again. So basically, I'm just simulating a bad cylinder. Now we can see that uh, this is the, uh, let's see if I can move this a little bit more, stabilize a little bit better. Okay. 
Okay, so this is our this is our dead hole, uh, and uh, right 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 here, right. So uh, let's see. So right here, it's it's uh, it's the I should actually let me let me uh, I need, I need to put my uh, I need to put my uh, uh, sink. Basically, here's where this is where we're missing our this is our dead hole here. Uh, we we could see there is actually no uh, voltage drop at all uh, because there's no current flow. We can see there is no current flow in here either. So, uh, but I uh, uh, let me uh, let me put the sink and then we'll uh, we'll see this better. I'm just going to use again cylinder number two to do. It. Okay, I got my sink back. I put my uh, I installed my. Uh, um, test light back in uh, in my cylinder, right in my in my uh, control wire again, and uh, back to my uh, positive on my on my battery. So um, let's just uh, this is gonna be better so you can see uh, uh, what's what's taking place here. All right, so we can see now. This is our, uh, as I said at first time, that this is my uh, misfiring, misfiring um, uh, cylinder. Now we can see actually that my uh, this is number two. Now number three, the, the current is a little higher, and uh, because I think it's as the engine slows down, then it's needed more current to keep it going again to get it back to the speed where it used to be. So. Uh, uh, this can be a little bit deceiving as well. You can see the higher current on the on the on the following cylinder. Just that's just because uh, the uh, let me see if I can. It's pretty much the same um, because the engine slows down and then it needs is a little bit a little more current, you know, to keep it turning. But on the on the first look sensor, let me move all this down so we can get we can see the first look sensor a little bit better. And also we can see my. Uh, uh, if you do our, um, as, again, as I said, when you do your voltage drop, you look at the bottom of your trace and literally we, we can see the hole right in here because there's no voltage drop taking place because there were no current going. I mean, there was a current, but notice that it's very low current going on because of that hole. And um, let me move this down all the way and um, let's see. Our first look sensor, what did that what that signal looks like? Let me see if I can. Uh... Okay. I'm trying to get a good position. I'm not in the, in the shot. Okay, so anyway, we can see now that uh, um, as the this is our cylinder number number two, and we can see there a uh, clearly a less air pushed out of the cylinder, and that's uh, so we've got two, three, four, five, six, and then one, and then uh, we have two again. So uh, this is a uh, another way of uh, doing a relative compression test with a that would be a first look sensor. And uh, that would be that. And now I'm going to uh, uh, put a uh, my spark plug back in the in the engine. Okay, I got my uh, spark plug back in. I'm going to trigger it again from my control wire, number two cylinder. And I'm hoping my battery is going to last. It is really getting low. So if not, I'll have to recharge it.
All right. So now, as we can see, this is my number two. Uh, again, there's no problem on this engine, and the reason why we were receiving that lower amperage is because of the, uh, literally, just because of the um, uh, hose that was hooked up in a cylinder. So there was a higher volume uh, in our cylinder number two because of the because of the hose. You know, the p piston was pushing the air in a cylinder and in the hose, and that's why we're seeing the lower lower comp uh, 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 compression here. So uh, let me try if I can. Just move this. Uh, right, there you go. That's much cleaner signal now. There you go. So our, so we can see everything is nice and even. So there's no problem in the engine. So we can see now. It's actually a very nice capture. So uh, at the bottom we have a yellow trace with our voltage drop. Uh, the red trace is gonna. It's our current clamp, and the green trace is our. Uh, 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 first look sensor and all the peaks are nice and even so this is a great example of good healthy healthy engine so uh, okay I think this is all I uh, I know it's gonna be a long video but I don't know I hope somebody's gonna enjoy <laughs> let me actually zoom in a little bit in you can see better there you go so now we, as I can see as I, as I said my uh, uh, Got the compression test, yellow lead with a uh, voltage drop, green trace with our low current crank, cl clamp, I'm sorry, and the green trace is our uh, 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 first look sensor. All right. Okay, guys, well, I hope somebody's gonna enjoy this video, and uh, I did enjoy making it video, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, again, uh, my goal was to to uh, present every possible way how to do a voltage drop, what is the benefits of doing a voltage drop. Uh, I purposely used that insular pressure transducer to actually see the relation between uh, our compression, our current and our voltage drop. As we can see when the compression goes up, current follows it and a voltage drops down. So, uh, and our first look sensor uh, basically, the, the, the amount of air that cylinder push, uh, sucks it in and pushes it out, this, the healthy engine is going to have the same the same amount of uh, air in, and the uh, uh, same amount of air is going to enter the cylinder, and same amount of air is going to be pushed into the into the exhaust. And the first look sensor is going to basically look at the uh, uh, measures a differential in pressure and uh, makes that pulsation on our on our screen. So um, and uh, I'm sorry I did not show how to set all the leads on the on the lab scope. But basically, like with your with your current clamp, you just have the two leads, uh, red and black. The red goes to red channel. The black goes to um, to your ground, and uh, just follow uh, your um, uh, the voltage that I was using here. It depends on what you use a low current clamp or high current clamp. And uh, I don't know. I think I hope this is gonna be useful to somebody. I, I know I sometimes I talk too much, but uh, um, I don't know. I enjoy doing this, so uh, we'll see what kind of, uh, what kind of feedback <laughs> I'm going to get from this one. Okay, guys. And every time I, I finish my video and I upload the video, I, I, can, I can see I've missed something or I, I must misspoke or whatever, and uh, my, my editing software completely sucks. Uh, I don't have high-end software that I can that I can do all these tweaks or whatever. So I just um, I just do what I what I best I can. So, all right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Um, please subscribe to my channel and uh, see you next time. Thank you.